I think the show's going pretty well. Yeah. So uh, we've got a lot of excellent psychics, healers, a lot of great seminars. I hope you're all having a great time. I know I'm having a really good time. Uh, Victor Peruda, and I'm the founder and organizer of the Victory of Light Expo. That idea came to me again through a psychic. Um, I had a store in Covington, a okay. uh, New Age bookstore, and a psychic came in from out of town. We were talking, had a conversation, and she had a psychic flash and said, well, why don't you do a psychic fair? And the idea had never crossed my mind, yeah. but it's like she threw that idea my way, and within a few months I had my first show, because uh -huh. I liked the idea, okay, yeah. let's do that. We get a, a real broad cross-section of people from all walks of life, uh, f f all income ranges, all careers, uh, some just come for curiosity, mm -hmm. and uh, some come because they want to learn more about these topics. Yeah. And uh, of course, the topics that we present through the seminars, we have 50 seminars going on throughout the weekend, those topics are selected to provide a breadth of um, information, mm -hmm. uh, because this field encompasses so many yeah. topics. There's everything from the paranormal, you have people interested in ghosts, hauntings, things like that. Uh, we have people who are interested in UFOs, what's going on with uh, that field. Mm -hmm. We have people who are interested in psychic and intuitive development, mediumship, they want to get a message from a loved one on the other side from a medium. Mm -hmm. They want to get to know a little bit more about their spirit guides and angels. Uh, we offer a past life regression uh, and a lot of people who want to learn about their past lives and have a personal experience about that can take that there for a very nominal cost. This expo is really an inexpensive mm -hmm. weekend of entertainment. Since the beginning of human society, even in tribal groups, mm -hmm. There's always been somebody that's played the role mm -hmm. of the spiritual guide, yeah. somebody who can intercede between the world of man and the world of the gods, mm -hmm. the spirits, the ancestors, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, that could be a shaman or uh, a priest or a priestess. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've really come to uh, regard the role that I play um, in society is very important uh, to human society, just as it always has been, because we've always needed people who can navigate those realms uh, and provide answers and guidance that is clear, hopefully accurate and unbiased as humanly possible to, to guide people because the decisions that we make can be very far-reaching and very co consequential, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes affecting the rest of your life in a very profound way. Okay, next question. Um, you right there. Yes, I'd like to know if you could tell me one more thing you Okay, your 14-year-old, she took her life, and when did that happen? Okay, Laura is her name, and you're wondering why. Okay, all right. That's a heavy duty question, but I'll do my very best. Now, I'm gonna tell you what she did. This was an impulsive act on her part. It was not something that was premeditated or pre-planned over a long period of time. It was one of those things where a switch went off in her head, you know, it was like a choice point, and it was almost, like you, an impulse buy when you're at the grocery store checkout. You know, oh, I think I'll get some candy. And, and like that switch went and she did it. And I, it was like, why would you make an impulsive decision like that about something so important? Well, obviously the answer is because she was bipolar. And 
I think obviously the effects of that are very, very permanent, but I, I, obviously they're permanent. But after she did it, she really, really went through a lot of, oh my God, what did I do? You know what I mean? I can't undo this. And therefore, it was a, a huge learning experience for her. And the huge learning experience will, for her will be benefit her, her in future lifetimes because she needs to curb her impulsive nature. And this experience was a big mistake. And she's having a lot of time to think about it right now. And she's also realizing the pain that she's caused to everybody. What she is telling me is that part of the way she's going to make up for that karma is she is indeed around you and will continue to be around you for the rest of your life. One of the things, and she's in service to you from the other side. Now, uh, are you having trouble with your legs? Okay, and what's going on? Is that a degenerative thing? You had several back and neck surgeries, and what was the last thing you said? You got crushed at work. And, and so it's affecting your legs also. Now, um, I do want to tell you, as time goes on, it will be very challenging for you to walk. Are you aware of that? You are aware of it, because it's already challenging. And Lauren will be pushing you around in your wheelchair when it comes that time. She'll be taking care of you. She picks you up every day. She continues to do that. And I'll tell you the way she comes across to me. Friendly, beautiful, positive. And that's the way you should remember her. Okay? All right. People come to the Victory Light Expo, they have an opportunity to really find out what's available to them. And uh, as I said before, a lot of people have found great relief from their problems through utilizing these resources. So yeah, that's a big part of Victory of Light. You know, look at what's in this town or in surrounding towns that's available to you. And here's a little bit about it, you know, so it doesn't seem so mysterious.